Hello and welcome to the Nidhika Behel show the game of life series Today in the studio I have with me a homemaker and a home chef Gini Sha welcome Gini welcome to the show Thank you Nidhika Gini so would you like to share with my listeners a little bit about your background the family and the home you grew up in Yes of course I'd love to I grew up in a very uh, typical gujarati family right my parents my two older sisters i'm the youngest in the house and i'm the most pampered <laughs> and spoiled brat of the house my parents have really really spoiled me and so have my sisters i've never felt you know uh, disappointed or i've never felt that you know oh i didn't get this or i didn't get that they've always given me everything in abundance how beautiful so we've had a lovely upbringing mom was uh, you know a typical homemaker perfect homemaker i'd say you know taking care of the in-laws taking care of my dad taking care of the three kids she had without help she would be in the kitchen making the most scrumptious meals for us every wow. single day amazing. yes she was talked about everywhere that oh shobhna sha makes the most amazing food Sounds so like my yeah mom. <laughs> 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 yes, uh, I'm sure all mothers are amazing, amazing in the kitchen. Yes. And my parents have been very forward looking. I so have my sisters and uh, my dad used to go abroad and used to get us the best of clothes and you know so we've been brought up in a very very fancy manner. So Gini mm-hmm. Varun to share with us what was it like growing up in a traditional Gujarati family right? What what were the typical messaging that was given to you as a woman in your growing up years? typical messaging that we were given was that oh you have to grow up you have to finish your education eventually you have to get married and settle down have babies be a homemaker just like our mom and uh, yes and that's what life is all about our parents never encouraged us to uh, be career oriented right right i think okay, which is so, true for most gujarati yeah. families and yes. even marwari families for that matter yes, right yes absolutely absolutely we we are jains gujarati jains right and for us everything was about you know getting married having babies and settling down yes yes so career work jobs were never a part of our upbringing never so when you got married like were you okay with the fact that you're going to be a homemaker for the rest of your life or did you have any dreams Yeah so I got married at a very very young age I got married at 22 oh I started dating yeah. my husband when I was 17 wow. and uh, you know my only aim was to get married and settle down and have babies because we were conditioned that way right but I didn't know so I am married to a Marwadi Jain okay okay who are a little more orthodox than Gujaratis are ah, they're more okay. reserved and more orthodox right so I did not foresee all that in spite of my parents you know guiding me and advising me against it right i did not listen and i just went for it mm-hmm. until the day i got married and suddenly it hit me you know that oh my god i'm married right before that everything was a bed of roses oh my god we had such a rosy picture about getting married and oh my god a honeymoon and <laughs> love and you know babies and things like yeah, that but yeah 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 I think most women actually I think Gini would agree relate with the uh, life as a bollywood dream you know Absolutely. it's what the movies show us right Absolutely. and unfortunately Absolutely. it turns out to be typically more like a hindi tv series <laughs> <laughs> you bet you bet because we have grown up watching bollywood movies you know we had those vhs at home and we would watch movies and you know everything so rosy and so beautiful and happily yes. ever after we all but when well, shahrukh happily... khan in our lives right <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> yes yes unfortunately it's not that way and you know things are never like a happily ever after right. never right the day i got married suddenly that night it hit me i said oh my god i'm married and now what next waking up in the morning at 6 a.m. cooking for your husband cooking for your family you know suddenly my parents and my sisters had taken a back seat for me right. you know my priorities changed i was you know not allowed to meet my parents very often I was not allowed to meet my sisters very often so that was a big 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 setback in my life cuz I can imagine yes so uh, putting it in a nutshell i faced a lot of challenges in my life at a very very young age and it was very drastic for me so i could not accept it very easily right but one thing i had decided to you know i had told myself that i will not get into depression i will not get suicidal i will fight my battles How wonderful. I was very strong. Yes, and I think it's hereditary because my mom is super super strong and I've got it from her. In fact, all three of us have got it from her. We're very strong. 
So that is one thing I decided. Of course, you know, a lot of things transpired in 11 years right. of my marriage. Right. And one day, you know, I we decided to separate from my in-laws right. and, you know, uh, have another place of our own, which worked out very well for me in terms of, you know, emotional setback that I had been through. Right. The mental torture that I had been through. Right. I needed to get out of that and move on. But at that time, I had not thought of, you know, starting a career or, you know, started starting to work. I had already, I, I had two babies already by then. Wow. And yeah, so it was very, very challenging. The whole process was very, very challenging. But yes, we fought it out. My yeah. husband was very supportive in that case. I think one of the things that men can really do beautifully, you know, especially in a scenario where, you know, a woman leaves her whole home, her family, her everything and comes to your house. I think the least a man can do is just support her. I wouldn't say that therefore rebel against your own parents, but definitely support in a way which is, you know, which is equally fair to the wife as much as it is uh, to the household. You Absolutely. Know? But he being from A, from a Marwadi family, orthodox, reserved, being the only son, you know, I had never expected and never wished and never hoped that he would leave his parents for us. You know, I'd never wanted to separate them ever. Absolutely. But things got a little out of hand and we had to take that step. And it's amazing yeah. that he supported you. I think and yes, hats he off to him. Yes, he hats did. off to him for that, right? Yes. He also prepared himself. I think he prepared himself for so many years till he could eventually take that step. Wow. So, so which worked beautifully for us. So how did you deal with your emotions? You know, you said you were very strong and you were very clear that you're not going to get suicidal or depressive. So how did you deal with your emotions in those years? You know, Nidika, my inherent nature is to be happy. So even if there was a little tiff at home or an argument at home, I would go inside the room, I would cry it out and come back smiling. Right. So, you know, I dealt with it in that way. I would keep calming myself. I would keep pacifying myself. It's okay. It's okay. It's just making me stronger. It's just making me stronger. So I dealt with it. I dealt with it for 11 years. But then, you know, there was a point where I could not take it. So that was the time when I had to take that step and move out. So Giri, I know you sing also, right? I think you've sung professionally oh, yes. as well. Yes, haven't you? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, so I did. was that the way you released emotions through your singing? Was it the time when you yes, started so, singing? So music has been one very, very, very big support in my life. Music heals me. 100%. In fact, it heals everyone. It, everyone, yes. I was just yes. going to say that. <laughs> yes, it heals everyone. So I used to have music on every single day from the time I would wake up till the time my kids would get back. So even now, even today, I have music on every single morning, whether it's the Gayatri <laughs> Mantra or it's the, the Hanuman Chalisa. Hanuman Chalisa, by the way, has given me immense strength to fight my yes. battles. Yes. yes, I agree with you. I yes. think there was, in yes. fact, there have been three key moments in my life when Hanuman Chalisa is what has saved me. You know, I mean, honestly, like it really works. If one can just it's, read it before sleeping, I think it just powerful beyond comprehension no really at any point of the, at any time of the day i would suggest you know if anybody if somebody could read it or sing it aloud that would be so beautiful you just feel suddenly you just feel oh my god i am the strongest woman on yes. this planet hundred <laughs> percent <laughs> yeah so so music has played a very very vital role in my life i can't imagine myself without music i can't imagine myself sometimes when i wake up to think oh my god what if i was not able to sing i think i am a little more gifted than the others are <laughs> uh, if you know uh, uh, because i am able to sing Yes, of course you are, my darling. And I mean, I tell you, singing is something which they say that you can model singing and you can make it better. But I truly believe that, you know, you either have it in you to sing or you don't have it in you to sing. Or you sing. don't have it in you to sing. I know, so, I know. So but, why did but, you not uh, pursue it professionally, Guinea? I mean, you could have come uh, You know, before I got married, mm -hmm. I was singing professionally. Oh, I was were. doing stage shows. Yes, I was. I oh, was. wow. I was doing stage shows. So like I told you, it was very drastic for me. The change was very drastic. So after I got married, I was not allowed to sing. I was not allowed to go for my classes. I was not allowed to perform on stage because I told you like again, it was a very orthodox family. Right. So we weren't allowed to do any of that. So, you know, all that was, you know, pent up inside me. And one day it had to erupt. Right, right. So, but nevertheless, I was... I always thought that, no, there is some way or the other, you know, that I can heal myself with music. So I would listen to music every single day. Of course. And I would sing every day along with it. 
Nice. So, you know, I'm a little confused here. So, since singing was your passion and when you did have a chance to start a career, right? Uh, yes. The turning point in your life where you actually had a chance to start a career. Why did you not pursue one in singing and instead became a home chef? Because I thought to myself that it was late for me to begin a singing career. I just thought to myself, I never took advice from anybody. I It was a preconceived notion that, oh, you know, you cannot start a music career after a particular age. Right. But I was wrong. I should have the minute I moved out. So how about if you get a chance? I don't know who's listening to this podcast today, but I do know we have a few people from the film industry who log in and listen to the podcast, some music directors. Too. I so hope how about so. you sing two lines for them and see? Oh Maybe my God. somebody <laughs> might call you. <laughs> we don't know, right? We don't That's know. That's really so sweet. That's so sweet. That's so sweet. I would I would love to sing two so lines. Please go ahead. I would love, we would to, love to, to hear your voice as well. So uh, there's one of my favorite songs uh, by Lata Mangeshkar. Rahe na rahe hum mehka karenge Ban ke kali, ban ke sabha, baage wafa mein Rahe na rahe hum Wow, I am getting goosebumps here, Gini. <laughs> I'm like, wow, oh my God, there is magic in your voice, my darling. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you, you. you're you right, you're gifted and you must do something about it. I don't know who's going to listen to these two lines, but whoever does, my hope and prayer for you is that somebody contacts you. How sweet. Thank, right? thank you. Thank you, Nidika. That's really, really sweet. But I yet do a few stage shows. I haven't stopped. Okay. Uh, yeah, I do do a few uh, private shows and wow. state shows wow. for our little social groups and you know our family and you know friends but your voice needs to go out in a bigger way right i know a lot of people <laughs> <told me that. laughs> okay so so tell me guinea you know what was the turning point in your life that made you think about becoming a home chef oh so becoming a home chef was never planned for me i was always always very fond of cooking because my it comes from my mom Right. <laughs> uh, second, my husband is a foodie. He's a gourmet. He loves food. He just <laughs> loves sweet. food. So uh, that really, you know, when I was married and uh, I was living in that house, so there were a few things that would keep me happy. Like, for example, music. The right. second thing was cooking for him. That I would see. really, really make me happy. So I would, you know, experiment, you know, try my own recipes. I would mix and match, you know, I would, I would do some permutation combinations and, you know, come up with my own recipes. So that he really appreciated. Of course, we had never thought that I would get into, you know, cooking and taking it professionally. All this while, it was all about, uh, you know, Marwari food and Gujarati food and Chinese at the most. Or right. then later came in Thai food. Yes. So gradually our palates evolved. Absolutely. Like, yes. for example, from Chinese, we moved to Thai. From Thai, we moved to Japanese, to Mexican, Lebanese. So I used to try all these dishes at home and they turned out pretty good. They turned out <laughs> exceptional. Wow. Uh, but I always felt that, you know, my husband was being biased. He was prejudiced because you know, he didn't <laughs> want to. <laughs> because we've grown up believing that, uh, you know, way to a man's heart is through his stomach, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Well, actually, the way to my husband's heart is through his stomach. So I want his heart. I want his soul. Then there came a point where I started experimenting on gourmet food. Right. You know, when we would travel, we would try food, you know, at these fancy restaurants like a Nobu and Zuma. And, you know, at that time, of course, Nobu and Zuma never existed. But before that, you know, when we went to the U.S., we would right. go to Jaya Thai and places like that. Right. Uh, Hong Kong, we've tried a lot of food, you know, the gourmet kind of food. Right. So I used to start experimenting or probably that went in, you know, this goes into that dish. So I started experimenting all that at home and it turned out really exceptionally good. How amazing. So my brother-in-law, that's my sister's husband, uh -huh. has traveled the world and he's eaten at the most fanciest restaurants, Michelin star restaurants. Wow. And then the day I, you know, sent him some food to his house and he called me the next minute and he said you know you are wasting your time and your talent <laughs> why don't you pursue it as a career and I just put it off I said yeah 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 you know you guys are just being prejudiced but he every time I would send him something to try 
he would call me he would pick up the phone and tell me that listen you need to do something about this seriously so one day it just occurred to me i said what am i doing with my life just partying just socializing bringing my kids up you know taking care of the house i'm what am i doing for myself yes what am i doing for my soul Absolutely. nothing nothing i'm just keeping everybody happy but yes. what about my soul yeah by then i had a huge social circle i i'm a people's person i love to make friends i love to make new friends so by then i had already spread the word around that i may be starting this my friends have been so supportive and so amazing i can't tell you nidika unconditionally they have supported me you know without any expectations or anything in return and they spread the word in turn for me that you know ginny's going to start this and she's an amazing chef she cooks really well and you know the word spread really really fast Fabulous. so it so happened that i started getting these small small orders so i curated a menu the wow. best of my dishes yes <laughs> nice so would you, so would you like first, to share with us what those dishes are very quickly on the yes, show yes so at first there was just about 8 to 9 dishes mm-hmm. so there were about two indian three mexican one lebanese right. uh, i had a dal bati which uh, which i my husband thinks i'm really good at he has <laughs> never eaten dal bati like that anywhere else <laughs> how nice so uh, that was on my menu then of course my falafel was on the menu mexican uh, quesadillas were on my menu at that time. Wow. Then it so happened people started ordering from me slowly slowly and then I had a lot of other things to introduce on my menu. Now I have about 35 things on my menu. Wow, that's incredible, Gini. Yes, that's yes. That's incredible. Yes. 35 yes. is very a exclusive. Lot. Yes, uh, exclusive, not the very typical kind of even the know, best of hotels we... and restaurants don't have 35 things on their <laughs> menu. <laughs> yeah, that's but here amazing. I'm doing all cuisines. which is why i have 35 items on my list wow. and the last one that i got inspired by was from my favorite restaurant in town and it turned out pretty good it's called the black rice nice <laughs> and uh, yes and i have orders every day and people are really really happy they give me amazing feedbacks and testimonials so do you have it in mind to sort of grow this into a full fledged thing like with you know maybe hiring chefs under you to work your recipes oh, or something wow. like that oh wow that is my dream that oh, is my lovely. dream that is my dream yes i want to grow in leaps and bounds wow yes it is my dream to have many many chefs so what what, what are you me. doing in that direction are you doing something are you waiting for something what's going on uh so you know i've already started flying my food at cornucopia Oh, uh wow. it's in matunga yes it's in matunga uh, right next to you know the madras cafe yes. people have opened a food store right next to their cafe wow and i'm supplying food to them every day that's so amazing yes that's been very progressive of course i'm doing a lot of events birthday parties and a lot of other events like that it's, it's been very very progressive i never expected it to grow so much and now i'm really excited to take it to the next level Wow, that's amazing. I think uh, you know that maybe you could just have a cafe where people come and do some karaoke and oh, wow. and then is cooking <laughs> and you're there and you get to sing along with them and you also get to feed them awesome food, right? From all over yes, the globe. Yes, yes, absolutely. And my dream is to become a celebrity chef. I am sure you will be. And maybe open a restaurant like a Nobu or a Zuma. Do you have something in mind that you would want to call? So my restaurant? brand right now is called the Evolve Palette. right i don't know what i would call it in future maybe it would stay as the world palette mm-hmm. because now people know me as guinea of the world palette right but if i open a restaurant ever yes i would want to invent a word which would mean music soul faith love god gratitude all in one i don't know what wow. that word would be called <laughs> well, but i could think of one i could think of one maybe it. you could call it musy soulicious you know so music oh and soul god. and you, delicious you got it <laughs> <laughs> you got it you got it that's a nice one i'm going to think about it that's a nice one you're being kind <laughs> it was <just> off. <laughs> no that's cute it's really cute i could almost imagine the logo also for it <laughs> i yeah i don't know you know there be some probably some halo sign and some music sign and some 100%, notes and 100%. i don't know what and of course have a karaoke every night and then if if i'm a celebrity chef then i probably have a wednesday special you know where oh, wow. i am singing and people are coming and watching me and you know eating their food and, i am definitely coming yes. okay <laughs> 
thank you nadika you're really really kind thank you thank you <laughs> you shared such lovely cuisine details my mouth is absolutely watering so i have to know how can we order this yummy food from you and how can my listeners order this yummy food from you so you can check out my page on facebook it's called the evolve palette mm-hmm. t h e e v o l v e d p a l a t e the evolve palette wow and they can place orders through the facebook page Uh no, I haven't put up many details on that page because I have a lot of random people messaging Absolutely. me and calling me. Yes. So I don't want to share details with them. So if they really want want to get in touch with me, they can message me on Messenger, on oh, private I message I get and get in touch with that's me. Fine. I'll share my number with them and I can give them all the details they need. Awesome. That's awesome. So Gini, what's the message you'd like to give other women out there who might be, you know, serving their families and loved ones at the cost of kind of neglecting their own dreams and desires? You know, a lot of women I have noticed they have this thing about, you know, if I can only sacrifice enough to give love to my family, then maybe I will receive the love and recognition that I deserve. No, you know? no, no. And in no, that no, pursuit, no. they kind of completely destroy their own passion, dreams, and desires, and the energy of sacrifice is. So so strong that it eventually even ruins the relationships for which the yes, sacrifice began in the first place. Yes, it drains them out. Right? It completely drains them out. So, what's the message you would like to give these women? I would like to share with them and tell them that yes, what you're doing is a fab job. Yes, you must take care of your family. You must not neglect them. You must do everything. They should be your priority. Yes, but do not neglect your soul. Do not neglect yourself. By neglecting your soul, you're hurting your soul. Do not do that. It's never too late to begin anything in life. Hundred. I was wrong when I thought that it was too late for me to start my music career, but I should have. Yeah. It was not late. Even today, if somebody tells me to go become a playback singer, I am ready to do it. Wow. I've become so strong. Yes, it's never too late to do anything. I couldn't agree with you more, Kitty, on that one. Yes. So really? please, please do not neglect your soul. Do things that make you happy. Go back to what made you happy. Yes. Just because we're married does not mean that we don't do things for ourselves. It's not fair. It's not even fair to the family because you know we're always coming from this energy of compromise and sacrifice, and at some day it's going to even disturb the relationships because the energy is getting spoiled. You know, in the family. Yes, absolutely. So if you're happy, if your soul is happy, everyone around is going to be happy because you're exuding that kind of positivity. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. And I think yes. a lot of people have it backwards. You know, they feel that if I love everybody, they will love me back. But if you can just love yourself, you'll be so much overflowing. You know, it's like a cup overflowing with water or coffee or whatever you you can imagine. Absolutely, right? Absolutely. It's like then you're giving it away freely without expecting anything in return, and that's the kind of unconditional love which can hold a family together. that are so beautifully absolutely absolutely i believe that if you love yourself yeah everyone will love you and in turn you will be able to love them even more absolutely yeah so gini you know what i want to ask you mm-hmm. one more question okay what yes. can a homemaker do to win in the game of life follow your dreams follow your passion live for yourself make yourself your soul the topmost priority wow Thank you so much Kini that's a beautiful message thank you so much for being part of the show thank you Nidika thank you for having me over thank you so much But before thank i let you. you go i'm going to get a little bit more greedy okay so i'm going to ask you for one last message generically it may not be for homemakers it may be for anybody out there even the men who are listening to the podcast any message you want to give on life to people in general love unconditionally don't get judgmental of people and have no expectations from anyone only then you will be happy your soul will be happy thank you so much gimi thank you that's a beautiful message you left us right there thank you so much for joining us today it was wonderful talking to you and i'm quite sure many women out there who are going to listen to this podcast are going to get inspired or at least think about the fact that what are they doing for their own happiness and even if one life is transformed because of this podcast i think you've done your job right thank you thank you nidika thank you i hope i hope i have brought a smile to at least one person's face 100% definitely especially when you were singing i'm sure you have brought a smile back to so many faces so many thank faces. you thank you thank you nidika thank you so much so thank you gini and thank you guys for listening to us today i'll be back soon with another incredible guest so hang in there see you soon bye bye